Hello there, and welcome to yet another lecture. My name is Drakken Doltagon, leader of the Dragon Keepers, a group dedicated to capturing and protecting strange and sometimes dangerous species of dragons. And today we have had probably the largest discovery in the history of dragon chronicling. You see, within the past few months, we have noticed an odd spike in the appearance of unique dragons, dragons that are individuals, not entire species. These dragons also seem to be rather strange, even by dragon standards. For example, a frequent dragon that has been sighted is called the Entangled Ribbon Beast. This is a species of dragon that looks like a cross between the long, snake-like body of an eastern dragon and the two heads of a hydra, though, unlike most hydras, if one of its heads is chopped off, only the original head regrows, rather than an additional second. These dragons' two heads are also seem to be constantly feeling different emotions. The head with the two blue horns on its cheeks appears to be constantly depressed, while the head without the horns appears to be jovial and happy, though the more comedic head is often the one that gets decapitated, leaving the creature constantly depressed. This creature was just one of the many unique dragons that have been arriving seemingly out of nowhere, until a certain connection was noted. See, along with a recent spike in unique dragon sightings, there's also been a spike in humans going missing. Typically, the dragon keepers do not investigate missing person cases unless the dragon is involved. But, because these spikes seem to be correlated with one another, we decided to investigate, and found a strange connection. Shortly before, or after, a person was reported missing, a rather strange dragon would be reported near the town where they went missing. This dragon, now referred as the Keynesian Master Maw, was often reported to be hard to describe, but consistent description reports claim that the dragon is mostly red with gold accents, has two tails, and, strangely enough, has a second head inside of its maw. This feature particularly concerns me, as this is not the first time I have encountered a dragon like this, and if this dragon is of a similar power level, we may have an issue. In other additional notes, the Canyon Master Maw can also create portals, teleporting itself as well as other dragons a fair distance. This dragon was also said to be, to be constantly followed by a smaller, more translucent dragon that somewhat resembles a bubble. Because this dragon was constantly sighted previous to or directly after the kidnappings, we thought they may be connected, but had no actual proof. That was until a dragon keeper by the name of Lady Elizabeth had an idea. If you're enjoying watching the Amazing Digital Circus as dragons, then be sure to leave a like on the video, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to Nurse Comics Inc. I'm sure these dragons will give good old Aaronville Bainsworth a run for his money. You say these dragons will give good old Aaronville Bainsworth a run for his money? Well, might have to slay the wee beasties. Aaronvold, these are not for you to slay. Leave them alone. You'd better listen to him, Aaronvold, because most of these dragons are under my protection, and if you want to have a go at them, you have to go through me first. And I assure you, you will not be going through me. Anyway guys, back to the video. Lady Elizabeth, a former court jester and one of our dragon keepers, had gotten an idea to, essentially, be bait for the dragon, allow it to kidnap her, and see what has been going on. I fully doubted this idea would work due to the obvious risks, but eventually was forced to agree. I pulled out my sword from my magical scepter and carved a few magical runes into her arm that would allow us to see and hear what she saw at all times through a small mirror, then sent her to a kingdom that had just reported a dragon sighting similar to the one we had been looking for. She arrived and pretended to fight off the dragon, but only enough to anger it and tempt it into capturing her. She succeeded, and the dragon grabbed her in one of its claws before flying away. Watching from our mirror, we saw as the dragon flew with Lady Elizabeth until it brought her to a strange island, surrounded by a large purple cloud. Once the dragon and Lady Elizabeth passed through the cloud, she began to uncharacteristically panic. She began to scream that she didn't know where she was, how she had gotten there, or even who she was. However, she wouldn't be screaming for long. Suddenly, her body began to transform, 
She grew red, white, and blue scales, large horns, wings out of her arms, and a long tail. She had become a dragon, which we have decided to call the Pombastic Jester. At this point, the Dragon Keepers came up with a fairly good theory on, on what's been going on. We currently believe that the island these dragons live on is cursed, and that any human that finds their way onto it will have their memory erased and their body altered into that of a dragon, and that all of these unique species of dragons that have been popping up were in fact human. Now, this discovery was horrifying within itself, and efforts are being actively made to free and cure all of the beings trapped on this island, including Lady Elizabeth. However, this has given us a chance to closely study some of these dragons. While I will not be talking about all the various creatures today, the one I will be discussing is one that, as of yet, we have not seen leave the island. The Zubalian Mismatched is a creature with the proportions of a typical western dragon for the most part, with two legs, two arms, but only one wing. Though we do not understand how, despite only having one wing, it can still fly. The reason it is referred to as the Zubalian Mismatch is because of its various colors. The head, body, wing, limbs, and eyes are all completely different colors from each other, almost like they were thrown together from many different dragons. These limbs have also been known to change shape and color altogether. For example, the first time we observed this creature, its left arm resembled a yellow and red cl claw, much like a crab. However, upon its next observation, its arm had shifted into a yellow and blue, more draconic arm. We currently believe two theories as to why this is why. Either this creature can shapeshift its limbs into anything it desires, or it has a healing factor, similar to the Entangled Ribbon Beast. However, every time it regrows a limb, it appears entirely different from its previous form. This dragon has also appeared to be far more distant, almost never socializing with the other dragons on the island, and never going on adventures with the rest of the island's residents. Ah uh, yes, the adventures. While these humans, turned dragons, are, for the most part, trapped on the island, we have often seen a group of them leave the island, under the heavy supervision of the Keynesian Master Maw. The dragon seems to allow this limited venture into the outside world as a form of entertainment for the prisoners. As expected, the dragons have used these limited windows of opportunities to escape, but the Master Maw has not allowed that to happen. Many of these adventures consist of the dragons hunting down other dragons, either for fun or for sustenance. One of these dragons was a rotund red Ouroboros, with multiple eyes and yellow spots. But the more recent dragon, or group of dragons, that this group hunted were a family of three gelatinous gator wings. Gelatinous gator wings, which technically resemble crocodiles more so than alligators, but were named more for the purposes of alliteration than accuracy, are species of brightly colored western dragons. They are also semi-amorphous and can stretch their limbs a fair distance. A group of the captured dragons, including Lady Elizabeth, were sent to hunt down these three dragons. While the other dragons were able to capture two of the gator wings through more violent means, Lady Elizabeth was able to corner the third gator wing, and who was seemingly the leader of the three, and convince him to come back with her willingly, offering companionship and safety on the island. It is truly reassuring that, despite her memory loss, Lady Elizabeth's dragon keeper nature has not been altered. Unfortunately, once the final gelatinous gator wing returned to the island with Lady Elizabeth, it was then mercilessly ripped to shreds by the Keynesian Master Maw. This was horrifying to witness, honestly, and I really want to slay this dragon now. Once I figure out how to get through the spell, trust me, I'm not bringing this thing in alive. <laughs> 